this is amazing yeah. because for the first time in my life, I felt that the patients were doing something that was actually bringing their blood pressures down. But I'll tell you how I came to this. In my practice, what was happening is patients were coming in with heart attacks and hardening of the arteries and angina. And I said, okay, there must be a cause. And I looked for it. And the cholesterol, most of the time was okay. Blood pressure was okay. They were not diabetic. And then I see all this hardening of the arteries. And I'm wondering why. So about 12, 15 years ago, I, I started doing sugar tests on them. And I found that they actually had mild diabetes, what we call glucose intolerance or impaired glu uh, fasting glucose. So the sugars were just slightly high, but not enough to make them a diabetic. So I said, okay, fine. So I should put these patients on something to sensitize them and make them better. And I put them on metformin. And I got a lot of resistance from a lot of physicians in the community, plus patients. Uh, but the outcomes were better. They, they actually did better. Then I started doing insulin testing in my office. And I started doing this when I read uh, some information from, um, uh, for, from a, a physician uh, who wrote a book on, on, on insulin, and he, Dr. Kraft. So it's yeah. called the Kraft yeah. test. So now what we do is we give them sugar water, patients, and we measure the, the sugar levels going up and back down again. And said, okay, it went up a little bit, not too bad. But I looked at the insulin response, and it was massive in these patients. So I took 100 patients. And I saw that they were making so much insulin. And I said, this is ridiculous. Why are you making so much insulin? Well, that insulin resistance. And then I linked the fact that it's the high insulin level that's actually causing the hardening of the arteries because the sugar levels are okay. Of course, what happens is over time, it's taking a gallon of insulin to bring your sugar levels under control. Eventually, even that's not enough. Yeah, so then the yeah. sugar level goes up and then they go to the doctor and say, oh, your sugar levels are high or your hemoglobin A1C level is high. Now you're a diabetic. Well, guess what? It's too late. You already have all the hardening of the arteries. You've done so much damage to your arteries. You probably did it for 15 to 20 years. And that's the discovery. And that's what really motivated me to make these changes in my patients to say that, look, you know, I got to get that insulin level down. And it is that high insulin level that really motivated me yeah, yeah. to really do the fasting program. Because I said, okay, how am I going to get insulin levels down? Yeah, how, how do yeah. I do that? I don't have a drug. So that's what, look, the whole thing comes down to insulin. For me, it was. Now, as things happen, I discovered more and more fun things in this fantastic journey. But the bottom line is, it was the high insulin level that really got me into this. Because I found that when I brought the insulin levels down, my coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, just went down. Patients did so much better. And that high insulin level, the only thing I know that really helps to bring that insulin level down, besides metformin and a few other drugs really is fasting. Yeah. Because when you don't eat, guess what? You don't make insulin. That's it. Your insulin yeah. levels yeah. plummet. And then the next time you eat, you make insulin, but a much less amount because yeah. you're not sensitive. So this fasting, I got into it through this way. Not because I've, I, I just wanted to make them reduce weight. Yeah. Not yeah. because I just wanted to reduce blood pressure. It was really the insulin that got me into fasting. Then, of course, I discovered as time went on that, my God, the blood pressures were coming down and I realized that insulin is a vasoconstrictor. It reduces nitric oxide in your blood vessels. So therefore, your blood vessels can't dilate. Now, that brings me to hypertension. That I said, oh my God, I was taught and you were taught that 95% of hypertension is essential. And this very word essential, <laughs> there's nothing essential about hypertension. You don't need it. So, should, I should, we, should, we, should, we, should we explain to non medical listeners what, what does that term essential mean when we say essential hypertension? What do we mean by that? Which means we don't know the cause of it. It's idiopathic. Idiopathic is another word we use, uh, which means we don't really know clearly what the cause is. It's just something that just happens. So, this essential hypertension is not really essential. You don't really need it. And I found through my own experiences here that. The fasting brought the blood pressures down. And I said, okay, so what's the correlation? It's insulin. I started reading more about insulin. And sure enough, when you give patients an insulin shot, the blood pressure goes up. Yeah, you yeah. take them off insulin, blood pressures come down. Insulin causes nitric oxide depletion in the blood vessels. Nitric oxide, by the way, is a vasodilator. Okay? 
nitric oxide is a natural endogenous product that makes your blood vessels dilate. And then when nitric oxide goes down, the vasoconstrict. This is a dynamic state that you're supposed to have. You walk into a cold room, your vasoconstrict. Uh, that means your blood vessels go down. When you go into a hot room, your vasodilate. That's a normal response. This nitric oxide is most essential in our body. It is so important for blood vessels that, in fact, there was a Nobel Prize awarded for this nitric oxide, as you know. Mm. So for the audience to realize that insulin, when it comes down, your nitric oxide production goes up, and therefore you vasodilate appropriately. Your blood vessels are not imprisoned anymore. And blood pressure started coming down. I said, this, this, this is amazing, yeah. because for yeah. the first time in my life, I felt that the patients were doing something that was actually bringing their blood pressures down. I mean, we always tell patients we have high blood pressure, okay, avoid excessive salt and go do some exercises. and all. Those are fine because they also can improve nitric oxide production. But this was a very powerful one. When I brought that insulin levels down on these patients through fasting, blood pressures just plummeted, and I had to actually take patients off blood pressure medications. Yeah. So yeah. that was a huge thing that I found with insulin. So fasting seemed to me the, the best way to, to, to really make the patient's blood pressures come down, and I found that the weights came down. And the question is, why did the weight come down? Well, insulin, in the bottom line for all your listeners, insulin just is a storage molecule. Yeah, puts everything yeah. in storage. So when the insulin levels come down, the storage padlocks are taken off. So your fat can now be mobilized. Yeah. Now yeah. there's, of course, I can go into all the enzymes that are involved and, and the, and the hormone-dependent lipase, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is when insulin levels come down, now your fat pads are available yeah. for yeah. metabolism. And I found that the fats just started coming off the patients. And when I would look at these patients who would do the fasting program, I'd look at them and they, they look great. It's not like their faces are all, you know, the, the excess of skin hanging off or they have skin hanging off their arms. No. Fasting patients seemed to lose weight in a more beautiful way. They, they were actually losing fat, but they were also losing the right amount of skin as well. Yeah. Because, yeah. you see, prior to this, prior to this, I used to tell patients, okay, you're going to cut your calories to only 850 calories a day. And you're going to have uh, four meals a day. Each one is going to be this much. And the patients would come back. Sure, they lost some weight. They would lose, lose a lot, actually, sometimes. But they would look terrible. They would look absolutely terrible. Their faces, their skin, and, and, and plus they were miserable. Because they just never, enjoyed, they didn't feel good yeah, yeah. eating small amounts of food frequently. This advice that we gave patients previously, that, hey, Cut your calories down by eating four small meals a day or nibble throughout the day. Totally wrong in clinical experience. They lost temporary weight. They all would put it back on again. Did it for years. I did it for 15 years and I was sick and tired of it. They would come back miserable saying, Doc, my life's miserable. I only eat this much and I just feel terrible. I'm hungry all the time. And I look at them, they sure they even look miserable. And their skin was just... So when patients were fasting, they would come back and they were laughing. They were, they were so happy. Yeah, yeah. The mood was better. And I said, well, why is this guy's mood so good? He hasn't eaten for two days now. And he says, Doc, my mood is better than it ever was before. I'm sleeping better as well. Uh, and he empowered himself. And I said, no, wait, wait, this is psychological. He's just, you know, he was able to do it, so he's feeling good about himself. He says, no, doc, I, I do feel good that I was able to do it, and, and I, I'm self-empowered, but also they felt better. So if you enjoyed this short segment, here's another clip that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you'd like to see the whole video, then click here.